So, we begin by uh, continuing with our study of maps and specifically one dimensional maps. So, recall that uh, the kind of discrete time dynamics we were looking at was a map function of the form x n plus 1 some function of x n and x naught is defined to be in some interval, but we started off by defining it to be on the reals and then the question was to study the dynamics if you like implied by this discrete time evolution equation. Before I do that let me settle a couple of questions which were asked last time the first of which had to do with what happens if this map function itself changes with time. In other words if at the end stage you have a different map function each time you iterate this of course would be the discrete time analog of a non autonomous system where the evolution equation would explicitly involve time on the right hand side and we are not looking at such maps to start with although one can in principle do so we are not going to do that at the moment. So, we are again looking at autonomous systems which do not have this possibility here. The second question that was asked was much deeper and had to do with whether in the presence of chaos which we have not defined as yet very clearly you could have order as well from chaos and there the comment uh, that I would like to make is that the lesson taught to us by chaotic dynamics is that simple evolution equations simple dynamics could have very complex solutions. So, very simple looking equations could lead to very complex evolution very complicated evolution in time the solutions could be extremely complicated. The other thing is also true namely you could have a very complex system and on the average it could behave in an extremely simple fashion. For instance if you took the gas particles in this room the motion is certainly chaotic at the classical level highly chaotic as we will see and yet there are very simple average laws such as the ideal gas equation of state P V equal to R T and similar laws which represent the behavior of macroscopic average quantities those could under suitable circumstances under special circumstances be actually extremely simple. Another example is you take a piece of metal and you apply a voltage to it and you have a current in it in a conductor and the current is proportional to the applied voltage very simple Ohm's law. This again is in spite of the fact that the individual charges inside the electrons could be doing very complicated things and yet you have a macroscopic law which is very very simple or Hooke's law in elasticity or fixed laws of diffusion and so on. All these macroscopic laws are quite simple to write down, but they refer to average or macroscopic quantities and they come out by averaging over a large very large number of individual microscopic motions which could themselves be very complicated. There are reasons for that as well and a little later when we talk about invariant densities I will come back to this and talk about thermodynamic systems and what is so special about them. The third question that was asked again jumping ahead a little bit was whether you could have simultaneously coexisting in a system both regular motion as well as chaotic motion and the answer is yes in general this is possible there could be regions of phase space in a dynamical system where if you start with an initial condition in one of these regions the motion remains regular non chaotic on the other hand there could be other regions where the system behaves chaotically this is entirely possible. We even talked about this in the context of Hamiltonian systems where something very special happens when you have chaotic motion and I will return to this a little later when we talk about chaos in greater detail and if you recall in Hamiltonian systems which are integrable the motion is on n dimensional tori in general for an n freedom system and if you took the example for instance of n equal to 2 then the motion in a four dimensional phase space is restricted to two dimensional tori and they could pictorially I could draw them as in this fashion perhaps you have one torus like this and there is another initial condition for which you have a larger torus of this kind and these tori are nested within each other it is entirely possible that in the region in between two tori you have chaotic motion irregular motion. But since these tori split the whole of the space into an inside and an outside remember the energy surface in this case is three dimensional in a four dimensional phase space 
and a three dimensional space is split into an inside and an outside by an object like this torus anything that is inside can never escape outside and so the chaos is actually contained in the region between successive tori if it happens as soon as n becomes greater than 3 greater than or equal to 3 then the phase space for 3 n equal to 3 for instance the phase space is 6 dimensional the energy hypersurface is 5 dimensional and the tori are 3 dimensional tori and these tori cannot split up this 5 dimensional space into an inside and an outside so all the chaotic regions can actually be connected to each other and you have what is called a stochastic web or Arnold diffusion which takes you from one point of this stochastic region to another and that goes through all of the phase space which is not striated which is not contained which is not uh, occupied by the tori themselves so this kind of behavior can happen could be very very complex and certainly coexistence of chaos and regular motion is possible in many systems okay now let us go back and look at some of these maps in a little greater detail we talked about the fixed point of such a map so a fixed point at x star implies is a root of x star equal to f of x star and it was stable if mod f prime of x star was less than unity unstable if it is greater than 1 and marginally stable or indifferent if it is exactly equal to 1. So these fixed points are the analogues of critical points for continuous time flows what happens if you have a fixed point of the following kind what happens in a map if the point let us call this point A if you have A equal to f of B and B equal to f of A what happens if you have a pair of points A and B such that A is f of B and B is f of A so it is quite clear immediately from this this implies that A and B are fixed points of the iterated map f of f of x which I will denote by f2 of x. They need not be fixed points of the map itself but they could be fixed points of the first iterated map so you take this initial point you take the value a then you calculate what f of a is and turns out to be some number b but you calculate f of b and you are back to a so this is entirely possible what would you then call the pair a and b it is clear that under iteration a goes to b and b goes to a it keeps coming back what would you call such an orbit it is the analog of a closed orbit in continuous space it is a periodic cycle and such a thing is called a period 2 cycle a b we are going to look at examples of this very shortly so in this staircase construction that we had or even this cobweb construction we had by the method of successive approximations it would turn out that the point the function corresponding to the initial value a is something some b and then to the value b is back to a and they form a period 2 cycle when would such a cycle be stable well it is clear that they would it would be stable if the slope of this function this is a new function now it is the function of the function of x it is a new function if the slope at the fixed point of f2 of x is less than 1 in modulus in magnitude this is exactly when it would be stable and what would be the criterion for that so I would like to have d over dx of f2 of x at x equal to a or x equal to b I would like this to be less than 1 in magnitude
so it is easy to see that since this thing could also be written as df over da let us call it x1 dx1 sorry so let us x2 so what I have here is a situation where f of x1 equal to x2 and f of x2 is equal to x1 back again and if you have a situation like this you could rewrite this in this fashion and if the modulus is less than 1 the product is less than 1 then you have a stable fixed point a stable period 2 cycle okay. A moment's thought will convince you that this is right all I have done is to write this as f of f of x and I have called f of x some other variable. So it is df1 fx1 over dx1 dx1 over dx2 so all I do is to differentiate a second time and this is it. Similarly you could have a period p cycle so an orbit which goes from some value a1 to a2 to a3 to ap back to a1 and the set of p points a1 to ap forms a period p cycle which is stable if the magnitude of the slope of the p iterate of this function is less than 1 at any of these periodic points or written in this fashion if the product of the slopes at all the points on the orbit is less than 1 in magnitude then you have a stable period p cycle and if it is greater than 1 it is unstable once again you could have a marginal stability. Now let us draw a picture and see when this happens and how it goes on. So we need to write down right away some kind of function which would do this and here for example let us specialize to the unit interval in the x axis so let me plot f of x here versus x here we focus on just the unit interval and let f of x also take values in the unit interval and then we ask what does this function look like what are its fixed points and so on. So let me take a very typical function which we are going to study in some detail so here is the bisector and suppose this function is like this some function with the single hump on top here is the fixed point and here too is a fixed point and it is immediately clear from this picture that both these are greater than 1 if this is a symmetric parabola for instance this slope is greater than 1 this slope is greater than 1 in magnitude and therefore this, these are unstable fixed points. On the other hand if I iterate this function once I go through the iteration once what would the iterate look like what would f2 of x look like. what would iterating this function lead to well we can do this in detail but perhaps it would do something like this this fashion yeah. and there are now several fixed points there is one here two here three here and four here okay. what would these fixed points correspond to this fixed point remains a fixed point here so the fixed point of a map remains a fixed point of its iterates that is quite clear because if f of x star is equal to x star then f any number of iterates fp of x star is again equal to x star under iteration this does not change at all. So the fixed point of a map is also a fixed point for all its iterates 
the converse is not true in general because if you look at this case this is f2 it has four fixed points while f has just two fixed points here. Now it is quite evident from this picture that this was an original fixed point it remains so this point here is this once again it remains so but you have two new fixed points here what would they correspond to as far as the original map is concerned what would these two points correspond to that would correspond to a period 2 cycle the new fixed points would correspond to a period 2 cycle so it would simply mean that if you took this value and found the map function it would go to this value and if you took this value and found the map function it would come back to this value. So the fixed points the new fixed points of the first iterate f2 they straddle the original fixed point of this map here and it is evident from the picture in this case at least pictorially it looks like all of them are unstable but that does not have to be the case it depends on the kind of function we are looking at we are going to look at it in some detail but I want you to appreciate the fact that period cycle period p cycles are fixed points of the p iterate of the map which are not fixed points of any of the earlier iterates just as this period 2 cycle is a fixed point of f2 which is not a fixed point of f itself okay. So now let us do some specific calculations to understand what this thing looks like there are several standard maps we should not use the word standard map because that is used in a specific context as well but there are several uh, so to speak typical prototypical maps which are studied in one dimensional dynamics which are useful to know about because they illustrate many many general properties and let us start with a few of them and go on from there the first of these is the so called Bernoulli shift or the doubling map or the binary shift and it is as follows so you start with a number x0 in the interval 0 to 1 in the unit interval and x1 is twice x0 modulo 1 in other words double the number and subtract 1 if the number exceeds 1 and the general function the map function is xn is equal to twice xn plus 1 is twice xn modulo 1. already this map has many many interesting properties and it is called the binary shift or the one dimensional Baker transformation or the Bernoulli shift or the Bernoulli map and so on for uh, ease of notation for convenience let me just call it the Bernoulli map. and it is given by xn plus 1 is 2xn modulo 1 let us write draw a picture of this map. So here is the unit interval 0 to 1 and here is x and here is f of x which is 2x modulo 1 and as always I draw the bisector first and then I start with this number all I have to do is to double this thing so it is a straight line with slope 2. So at the point half at the point a half the map function has already crossed 1 and then it would go on like this up to this point up to 2 but then we are told you have to subtract 1 if the number exceeds 1 and that is equivalent to taking that piece cutting it and putting it back here. So I should draw it as a straight line so it does not look like it is a curved line. the slope is 2 everywhere is this a linear function would you call this a linear function it is piecewise linear it is not linear it is piecewise linear this piece is linear this piece is linear is it continuous or discontinuous it has a discontinuity at this point does it have fixed points 
0 and 1 are fixed points that is very clear are they stable or unstable they are both unstable because the slope is 1 is equal to 2 in magnitude at each point and therefore it is these are both unstable fixed points okay. What happens perhaps this has stable periodic points we should check that out so what does the doubling what does the double map look like what is f2 of x this is equal to 2 squared x modulo 1 because it is 2x modulo 1 and then another 2x modulo 1 multiple double it once again so it is 4x modulo 1 and what does this function look like so here is a half here is a quarter here is 3 quarters and this function looks like this and this is the bisector where are the fixed points of this map well 0 is a fixed point so here we had uh, fixed points uh, 0 and 1 both unstable the fixed points here of course 0 and 1 are fixed points but you also have two more where are these points it is easy to guess here all you have to do is to double this number and take modulo 1 so where is this point what happens if you take one third where does one third go when you double it two thirds and where does two thirds go when you double it one back to one third because four thirds you subtract one it is back to one third so it is evident that zero one third two thirds and one are fixed points of this iterated map of which zero and one are already fixed points of the original map and one third and two thirds form a period two cycle so this point jumps into that that point jumps back into this and it keeps going forever are these stable is this a stable period two cycle it is un definitely unstable because the slope is 4 the slope in fact is 4 definitely unstable are there any other period two cycles pardon me well 0 and 1 are trivial period 2 cycles because they are actually period 1 cycles they are already fixed points so I said a period p cycle is a set of p points such that it is a fixed point of the p iterate of the map but not of any of the earlier iterates yes so there are no other period 2 cycles here as far as we can tell okay what about the next iterate the slope would be 8 and you get a large number of fixed points but you get a new period cycle as well but the fact is that all of them are unstable so it is immediately clear that all the points here all fixed points of the map as well as all its iterates are unstable then the question arises if a point does not belong to a periodic orbit where does it go on iteration where, it, where does it end up it turns out it wanders forever on the unit interval never leaving the unit interval but in a completely aperiodic and irregular fashion in fact in a chaotic fashion so this is our first example of what chaos is we will define chaos much more precisely but the fact is that you have an infinite number of points which sit on periodic cycles all of which are unstable so if you start with a point exactly at one of the a fixed uh, one of the points of the orbit of a periodic cycle this point will move in this periodic orbit but all other points the iterates will uniformly and densely fill up the entire unit interval given enough time and this is an experiment you could do with pocket calculators start with the number random number between 0 and 1 and iterate and keep doing this and you will see that gradually its iterates fill up the entire interval you could then ask what are the points that actually fall on periodic orbits 
we found that one third and two thirds form falls on a periodic orbit. What about the point one fifth? Where does it go? Well, one fifth would go to two fifths, which would go to four fifths, which would then go to eight fifths, which is the same as three fifths, which would go to six fifths, which is the same as one fifth. So, you end up with a period four cycle the point one fifth would go to a period 4 cycle and so on. So let us generalize this uh, what is the sensible way of doing this a convenient way of doing this is to write this x naught in binary decimal notation using the digits 0 and 1. So it is a number between 0 and 1 so let me write it as 0 point a naught a1 a2 a3 dot 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 where each ai equal to 0 or 1 if this is x0 what is x1 what is x1 equal to I have to double this number in other words multiplied by 2 and if it is greater than 1 I throw away the 1 part if x0 is less than a half then a0 is 0 because this is the coefficient of 1 over 2 to the power 1 if x0 is greater than a half but less than 1 then a0 is 1 at the next stage when I multiply by 2 it is equivalent to taking this decimal point and shifting it there that is all it does because I have written it in binary so it is immediately clear that x1 on doubling so twice x0 is a naught point a1 a2 a3 dot 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 or therefore 2 x naught mod 1 this is x1 equal to 0 point a1 a2 a3 naught. this is the reason for calling it the binary shift all you have to do is to move this decimal point one place to the right and erase whatever is here. Is this map invertible? Is this map invertible? In other words, if I give you x1 as a function of x0, looks like this, or xn plus 1 as a function of xn, looks like this. Is this map invertible? If I give you an xn, you can find a unique x0, xn plus 1. But if I give you an xn plus 1 can you find a unique xn no indeed because if you give me a value here I find the map function or here I find this function the next iterate but if you give me the value of xn plus 1 there are two possible xn's from which it could have emerged regardless of what a0 is you get the same x1 so the map is not invertible because it is not linear non invertible although it is piecewise linear this non invertibility is crucial because it means if I give you x n and asked what x naught could it possibly have emerged from there are two to the n possibilities all of which would lead to the same x n so you can see at each iteration I am losing a piece of information I am losing one bit of information because this gets erased at the next stage a1 would get erased and you would have just 0 0.a2 a3 and so on so you have no way of going back and recovering what a1 was or what a0 was so this plays the role of this is this is responsible for many of the properties of this map that it is not invertible and moreover the number of pre images of this map the number of possible x naughts which lead to a particular x n is actually increasing exponentially with n it is 2 to the power n now let us see what are the points that lie on periodic orbits can we say that from here what points would lie on periodic orbits 
if it is part of a periodic orbit it is clear after some time this pattern should repeat what is the necessary and sufficient condition for that well either this number terminates either this expansion here in binary decimal form terminates at some point after which you just get 0 0 0 everywhere or it repeats it is a periodic pattern by itself what do you call those numbers rational numbers all rational numbers between 0 and 1 would lie on periodic orbits and all irrational numbers for which this never repeats itself would lie on the single chaotic attractor here. So that tells us at once that all all irrational in this case it is the unit interval itself the full unit interval is the chaotic attractor in a sense which will become precise in a moment the rational numbers are dense on the unit interval arbitrarily close to any point in the unit interval you can find rational numbers so they are dense on the unit interval but they form a set of measure 0 the total length of all the rational numbers is 0 you can count them off they are denumerable they are infinite but denumerable you can count them off you can put them into one to one correspondence with the integers yeah yeah so it is clear that is a good point he says that what if you have a system what if you have a number where the first k digits are some specified digits and after that a pattern starts what sort of object would that be what sort of point would that be it would be a point which after a certain number of iterations falls into a periodic orbit so it is a pre image of a periodic orbit would you call such an initial point rational or irrational rational absolutely once again it is rational it is just that it does not start off right away with a periodic pattern you say that it lies all period, uh, rational numbers lie on periodic yes it does not really lie on periodic cycles. why not why not it is a rational number yeah the initial points are not a part of the periodic cycles. why do you say that why do you say it is not only after you, you shift a certain number of decimals ah the pre image ok we will come back to this question and answer I want you to think about the answer to this question what if I have k digits here which are completely arbitrary and after that you have a 0 1 0 1 0 1 etc after this many the next number is etc this is certainly possible forever what kind of number is this and what kind of orbit does it belong to. So what would you say? Again, pre -image of it's rational. Is this a rational number or not? It is a rational number. Therefore, the correct statement is that all rational numbers either lie on periodic orbits or on pre-images of periodic orbits. A finite number of pre-images of periodic orbits. In other words, after a finite number of iterations all rational numbers would fall into periodic orbits but the number of irrational numbers is infinitely larger than the number of rationals it is uncountably infinite you cannot count you cannot enumerate 
all the irrational numbers between 0 and 1. Those numbers the fate of those numbers is that they uniformly and densely fill up this unit interval never hitting a rational point and never settling down to anything specific any specific part of this unit interval but always moving about always wandering on the unit interval back and forth. So that is one aspect of this quote unquote chaotic behavior which we still have to define precisely which I will do in a very short while. The other aspect is that if you start with two numbers which are close to each other then here is an instance where the error after n iterations becomes as large as the unit interval itself and this is exactly what I said when I said we have exponential sensitivity to initial conditions. So it is very obvious that if you start with an x naught so I start with an x naught and that leads after n iterations to x n equal to 2 to the power n x naught modulo 1 and I start with a y naught which is equal to x naught plus epsilon and that goes to a y n which is equal to 2 to the n x naught plus epsilon modulo 1. So the separation between the two is 2 to the power n epsilon modulo 1 and if n becomes large it is clear this number for arbitrarily small epsilon could become as large as the unit interval itself. So this was the statement I made that there is exponential sensitivity to initial conditions that the separation between neighboring trajectory neighboring points is in fact exponential in time remember that n is time discrete time and 2 to the power n is e to the n log 2 we would like to make that a little precise we would also like to find out how do we how are we sure that the iterates of these irrational points fill up this entire space and finally we would like to ask what is meant by exponential sensitivity so let us take that up next. So this is at the root of chaos what I mean by exponential sensitivity to initial conditions pictorially it means that if you start with an initial point here and let me do this in continuous time dynamics just for pictorial uh, for illustration sake and suppose this is the trajectory of this part of this point and I start with the neighboring point here and let us suppose it is the trajectory here then I would like to find out if points arbitrarily close to this point spread away from it exponentially fast or not as time goes on. So I would start with this initial distance here between them after time t I would find this distance and if this is exponentially a multiple e to the power some lambda t times this then I would say there is exponential sensitivity but I want to do this carefully. So how would I do this and let us do this in terms of iterations either discrete dynamics or continuous dynamics does not matter how would I do this how would I write this uh, carefully if this is epsilon and this is e to the lambda t epsilon and I want to extract this lambda clearly I take this distance divide it by this distance take the log and then divide by 1 over and divide by t in order to extract the lambda so I define yes uh, what is the sanctity behind uh, to what to the exponential sensitivity ah, okay if the separation is a power law separation in time like square root of time or time uh, t itself or t squared or t to the power 20 or whatever then you can actually compute the difference you can calculate the way the error amplifies 
in polynomial time it is completely computable but not possible if it is exponentially fast. In other words no matter how small your initial error was eventually things would blow up exponentially and we saw in our study of dynamical systems continuous time dynamics that except at points where the vector field vanished everywhere else the flow was actually exponential. The solutions locally were always of the form exponentials of time multiplied by some eigenvalues of some linearized matrix. So that is generic always right besides that is precisely the sort of separation which leads to amplification of uncontrolled amplification of errors of initial uncertainties or imprecisions. If, if they yes it means that there is exponential instability however for chaos you need something more than that you need to have that in whole regions of phase space not at individual points. So certainly we can control what happens in most cases in regular behavior but here it becomes uncontrolled the error will actually grow till it fills up the system size itself that does not happen in normal systems usually okay. The linearization is an approximation of a non-linear system yes. The reason it became exponential there was because we had first order dynamics we had first order exponential we had first order dynamics but the point is is the system exponentially unstable in whole regions of phase space or only at isolated points just the fact that you have an e to the lt times x0 locally when you rectify a vector field does not imply chaos at all you need many other conditions which is. So my, my question is if the, if the system had been inherently linear yes that is it is not an approximation yes then in whole regions of space it is exponential. The solution is exponential but the errors do not multiply exponentially in a linear system they do not multiply exponentially in a linear system at all right you need non-linearity for this sensitivity to happen it is not enough to have non-linearity but a plain linear system it does not do it does not do this at all okay because we are going to put down conditions for chaos. You have in mind a system of the following kind x dot equal to x on the real line the solution here is x of t is e to the t x of 0 and therefore if I start with an x0 here x not here then suppose here is x at time t and I start with an x not plus epsilon here that of course will go to x not plus epsilon e to the t whereas this is x t is x not e to the t and this separation is an e to the t times this original separation this is not chaos this just says that the solution is an exponential this is not chaos because the phase space is unbounded here for chaos we are going to define it for systems for which the phase space is actually bounded and yet you have amplification of errors such that it mixes up in the space so badly that the error finally amplifies to the system size itself the size of the phase space itself that is not happening here this is integrable completely integrable. There is a concept of chaos but it is not very interesting if the exponential instability is because of an unboundedness in some phase space in some axis that is not very interesting because the system itself is integrable. So you will see what else is needed in order to produce chaos. But they can always be systems which are not integrable but unbounded. Yes uh, though they would be chaotic as difficult, as difficult yes I agree I agree entirely but they are not very interesting because there we know the system is unbounded and that is the reason why things are becoming exponentially large this is not very interesting yeah we are looking at systems which are not integrable that is very clear and chaotic systems are not integrable in general okay again I need to qualify that we will come back to this in the case of discrete maps. So I want to define here this multiplier lambda in a careful way I want it such that it is a property of this trajectory. I want to see how things are thrown away from it as you go along so if you have a neighboring point here that is thrown away if you have a neighboring point here that is thrown away another one here is thrown away and so on 
and I want to probe the rate at which it is being thrown away. So let me define it in the following way. I start by saying I have an initial point x0 and an initial point x0 plus epsilon here say that is my initial distance and if after time t this point x0 finds itself at xt and the point y0 finds itself as at yt then I compute modulus of yt minus xt divide by y0 minus x0 in this case and in doing so I have got this e to the power whatever it is I have got this I take the log of this that brings down this exponent and I divide by a 1 over t and that is supposed to give me this lambda but I need to make sure that I am on this trajectory back here so I go to the limit in which epsilon goes to 0 recall that this is equal to epsilon okay. and I need to do this and this is supposed to be the asymptotic behavior so I take the limit as t tends to infinity of this quantity and that is my lambda this is the definition of the Lyapunov exponent. I want you to pay particular attention to the order in which these limits are to be taken. If I do not do that then it is clear that if the phase space is bounded this number here is always finite and then I have a whole lot of points it does not diverge or anything like that and then I take its log divide by a t and as long as this is finite the whole thing goes to 0. On the other hand if epsilon goes to 0 first you may have a very non trivial lambda this limit may exist and give you a non trivial number that is the one we want to calculate. But for maps we could write a similar thing this was for flows for maps what would you write again I would write lambda is equal to limit n tending to infinity. limit epsilon tending to 0 1 over n the log of the nth iterate divided by that would be my definition of the Lyapunov exponent if it exists. Now our map function says x n plus 1 is f of x n. So what does this become? This becomes equal to limit n tends to infinity limit epsilon goes to 0 1 over n the log of f nth iterate of x0 plus epsilon because that is the nth iterate of y0 minus f nth iterate of x0 divided by epsilon but what is this equal to we could simplify this it is very clear that if this map is assumed to be differentiable then what happens so coming over from there therefore lambda is equal to limit n tends to infinity 1 over n and then what do we write here yeah it is just the derivative at the point x0 so it is equal to log of the derivative over dx at x equal to x0. that if it exists 
is the Lyapunov exponent and it is a function of the starting point. So it is in fact definitely a function of the trajectory on which or the orbit on which x0 finds itself could change from one orbit to another most certainly. But what do we have here remember that x1 equal to f of x0 x2 is f of x1 and so on xn is f of xn-1 and so on. So could we not write this in a simpler form you could write this as limit n tends to infinity 1 over n the log of so let me write this df and x what is fn of x it is just x sub n right. So this is equal to df of x n minus 1 over d x n minus 1 times d x n minus 1 which is df of x n minus 2 over d x n minus 2 and I keep going down all the way d f of x0 over d x0 evaluated at x equal to x0. Agree? But that can be simplified a little more and you can write this as equal to limit n tends to infinity 1 over n a summation from j equal to 0 to n minus 1 hmm, f prime of xj log So it is just the time average this is an average over time it is the long time average of the log of mod f prime of x at all those points on which the initial point x0 falls as you iterate in time over a very long period of time. What is this for the Bernoulli shift that we just looked at what would this be what would this be for the Bernoulli shift it could become an integral yes we are not sure yet but we have yes we should be able to convert this to an integral but then you have to say over what and so on but this can be computed very easily for the map we just looked at the doubling map the Bernoulli shift. Well, the map was just 2x mod 1 and what is the slope it is 2 everywhere the slope is 2 at all points on this map and therefore you get 0 to n minus 1 log 2 and you got to divide by this so what is this equal to it is log 2 and this system is exponentially sensitive to initial conditions could turn out that lambda is 0 in some cases could certainly turn out that lambda is 0 incidentally if you had a power law separation between two trajectories what would you get here what would you get suppose you had an error which increased like a power law remember in our map here uh, xn was 2 to the n x0 mod 1 and x uh, yn was equal to 2 to the n x0 plus epsilon 
mod 1 and what we found was this amplification of this error 2 to the n epsilon and we got this we essentially found this we wrote it as e to the n this quantity is e to the n log 2 and we detected this log 2 there if instead of 2 to the n x0 plus epsilon suppose this went like n squared what would happen if you went through this process we have a power law separation now and instead of errors amplifying n fold suppose the initial precision imprecision epsilon goes to epsilon times n to the power k yes when I take this and divide by epsilon this goes away when I take the log I get k log n and then I have log n over n and the limit is 0. So this method this definition of the Lyapunov exponent is geared to find exponential instabilities it does not mean that trajectories have to stay close to each other they could separate sub exponentially and if they did that you detect 0 Lyapunov exponent Lyapunov exponent would just turn out to be 0 in those cases could even turn out to be negative we are going to see instances of that we will see the physical interpretation of what happens if things become negative but you can actually guess suppose I find the lambda to be negative what would you conclude I would yes yes absolutely right I would conclude that things are converging exponentially rapidly either falling into some periodic orbit or into some fixed point which is stable exactly so I would immediately detect stability if I had negative Lyapunov exponents but if I have a positive Lyapunov exponent it certainly implies chaotic behavior we will define chaos carefully but now the time has come for me to say what the definition is I will repeat this again we want a finite phase space we want exponential sensitivity to initial conditions in the sense of one or more non-zero Lyapunov exponents and finally you want a dense set of unstable periodic orbits buried in this phase space and that is what throws things aside on both sides exactly like a separatrix does the statement was and I will repeat this again because we are over today. Mm -hmm.